Hey guys, if you don't already know me, my name is Travis Dykes, and I'm a 26-year-old professional musician here in Nashville, Tennessee. As a professional musician, you get to be a part of a lot of cool opportunities and experiences that not many people get to have. But also, as a professional musician, you're held to a different standard when it comes to knowing your music. Because when you play for artists at concerts, church conferences, studio sessions, and whatever you deem as an acceptable opportunity, everyone expects one thing out of you, to know your music. So around the summertime of last year, I made a mistake that I feel that every musician has made before, which is I overbooked myself. I winded up accepting too many opportunities too close together and realized that I only have one week to learn all of the songs for all of these events. The way that it worked out is that every time I finish an event, I was on to the next which meant I had to know all of my music before I left. So in a two week span, I had around seven events to play in, which meant I had to learn a total of 50 songs in one week before I left for the first event. So here's how I did it. First, I had to determine what songs were hard and what songs were somewhat easy. Because that will help me determine how much time I need to dedicate to certain songs. My process for determining what songs are hard or easy are based on if the song can easily be written as a chart or if it's not very easily written as a chart. Here's an example of a song that may be very hard to chart. versus a song that would be easy to chart. Also, I've determined easy and hard songs to be songs that I've played before versus songs that I haven't. Once I determine what songs go into these two groups, then I'm ready to start the next step. I'm not 100% sure if there's another name for this process, but song mapping is what I call it. Before we get too deep into this, let me illustrate what a song generally entails. So we have our intro into our verse, and then our chorus, and then another verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, and out. Or you can think about that as an ending. Another general way that you see song structure, you'll see a intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, instrumental, chorus, and then out. When it comes to any song that you would listen to, it will most likely have this general structure. So now when it comes to learning each hard song, which for me usually is the hardest to retain, having a way to find the structure or map of these songs will help me to learn each intricate part of every song. The way I would do this is through listening to each of the songs and determining what each section is of the song. And you could do this with or without your instrument. Most times I do it in my car. Sometimes when it comes to playing more complex songs like gospel, jazz, or fusion, the sections may not be easily determined. But in most cases, like I said, every song generally abides, starts, or at least starts off with the general song structure and either adds or subtracts from it. So when that happens, I listen to the music and try to label the sections of the song based on the general song structure. Once I've learned where the sections are, I will start learning the sections themselves and making little notes as needed for each section of the song. So now when I look at this so-called hard song, it's easier to digest and remember because I can see the song map and know exactly where the song is going. And I'll repeat this process with each of these hard songs until all of them are somewhat familiar. Now here comes the fun part, writing the charts for the easy songs. Those four to five chord songs that seem like they are so easy that I shouldn't even have to listen to them until I get to rehearsal type songs. 
A lot of the time I feel like I can remember the Easy song so easily, but due to how many of these songs share the same progressions and feel, they may be easy to learn, but are the hardest to remember. For me, using the Nashville number system is the easiest way to learn any song extremely fast. If you don't already know it, check out my video on it in the description below. Also, if you start to get confused or don't understand some of the terms that I'm using while I'm going through this, all of the techniques that I use to learn how to write charts will be found in this book. The Nashville Number System by Chas Williams. I'll drop a link in the description uh, so you guys could go and pick it up. Now here's a really basic rundown on how I write charts. The easiest way to show you how I write my charts is to take a song and just chart through it and let you pick up the techniques on the way. First things first, we're gonna be breaking down Sea of Victory by Elevation Worship. Before we get into putting the music down, we wanna set up our chart. We're gonna start off by putting the name and artist in the middle. Then we're gonna put the key of the song on the left-hand corner. Then on the right hand corner, we're gonna put the BPM and time signature. Now our song is set up. Then we're going to label each section as we go through it on the left side. I have a little semicolon by mine, but you sometimes can see put a little box around it and even like abbreviate it as an I instead of the whole intro or like as a V1 if it's just the, it's the verse one. Feel free to label it in whatever way helps you the most. So we're gonna start off by putting down our first note, which is six. Every time you see a note, that means it's equals to one bar. So if you don't know what a bar is, all it is is four beats. So if I look at this six, I'm gonna think one, two, three, four of how long I should stay on it based on the BPM of the song. If it's by itself, like it is right now. I have my six and now I just drew about four. When I have this underlined, what that means is that it's going to be a split bar. Basically, you split the bar of music, split that bar in half. Instead of looking at both these notes and thinking eight, a total of eight beats or two bars, you're gonna think about it as one bar just split up. So that means two beats go to six and then two beats go to four. This could be indicated different ways using an underline or a box or a slash. Then we're gonna write our one. Since it's by itself, that means it's gonna be one bar. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the next one. Six minor, four, and an underline to indicate that it's a split bar. I always like to write my lines with four bars on each line because when you get real much more than that, you start to get confused, especially when it's a longer song. All right, now let's check out my verse. Pretty much the same progression, six minor, the four and a split bar, and then a one, six minor, four, split bar, and a one again. But we're gonna add something different this time. We're gonna add a repeat sign. And what a repeat sign means, it generally means you repeat one time. And I always like to indicate if like on the side, to make a note saying if it's gonna be more than one time. But for this one, it means exactly one time. So now we're gonna head to our chorus. And this is why I say these songs are super easy because like we're literally playing the whole same progression pretty much this entire song so far. We got our six minor, we got our four, we got our one, and then we have our five. So that means that this is four bars and they're all one bar each. Now we're going to our interlude, which is pretty much the same thing as the verse. Then I'm gonna put a little mark to let me know the this is where the bass comes in. So the bass is not in the song until this part of the song. So I can know, all right, this is when I come in, which is very, very important to know. Then I'm gonna do the verse pretty much exactly the same as the first verse just add a, re a repeat sign on the end. Then I'm going back to the chorus, which is exactly the same as the other chorus, but it just repeats two times. Then when the song actually changes progression than what has already been throughout the song, will be in the bridge. We're gonna start with the four, which is one bar, and then we're gonna do a split bar between the five and the three. But the bar is not gonna be split evenly. And the way we indicate that is through these little notches on top of the number. I have three notches on my five, and I have no notches on my three. So what that means is that the three notches mean how many beats each note gets. So this five gets three beats, and that three gets one beat, but you don't necessarily have to indicate that because it's pretty self-explanatory. So three, and so that gets the last one. Same way for this four and the six minor. It's the split bar, but the four gets three beats, and the six gets one. And then, then we have a five, which is one bar. And then I made my little markings to say bass is gonna be out the first two times that we go through this bridge, and then it's gonna come in on that third time. You can make it whatever way easiest for you to remember, 
but this is just the way that was easiest for me at the time. And then to finish out the chart, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do another chorus, and then I'm gonna do another bridge, and then that would be the end of the song. And you see at the end of the song, I have this diamond. And what that diamond around the four, what that means in music is that you hit a note and you let it ring out. Um, and most times when you see a diamond and it's over one bar, that means you hold it for one bar. You'll hit it, one, two, three, four. This is just an overview of how I write charts. If you want me to do a more in-depth one, I'm totally game to do a video talking through this in way more detail. This is just so you can kind of get the under, have the understanding of what is going through my head when it comes to writing charts. And also you can do this with not just numbers, you could do this with letters as well using these same techniques. So don't if you don't know numbers really well and you want to use this technique, you can. So after I use all three of these steps, I wound up learning all 50 songs by the time of my first event. I made some incredible memories they're gonna last forever. That doesn't mean that I didn't have to remind myself a couple times. It's like, okay, this is all right, switch my mindset to the next stage or switch my mindset to the next event, or switch my mindset to this conf church conference. I had to do that multiple times. But the thing is, is that I was able to learn and retain quite a few of these songs just from this one week of learning all 50 songs. If you have a lot of songs that you have to learn for an event or if you get in a predicament like this, just know you can get through it. Just have to be diligent. It was not easy for me to take out a couple of hours or a few hours each of these days to learn 50 songs. Some of these songs I was able to chart through and get through in like five, 10 minutes. And some of them, it took me like an hour and a half just for one song. Just go at your own pace. If you know it's gonna take you a second, then don't wait to start preparing. Everybody has their own way of learning. And so just make sure you find what it is that works best for you. But just always, 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 before you do anything, make sure you know your music. No matter if it's conference, at church, it doesn't matter if it's in a studio session, make sure if you get the music beforehand that you know it to the best of your ability. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.